401k. County uses 403b or 457. It's the exact same thing. It's just called something different because only corporations can offer 401ks based on the tax code, right? Their retirement account is it's the exact same thing. It's just called something different. So I know if I sit down with Jonathan's mom, I'm going to be talking to her about her 403B, and I already know they do not match. Typically, typically, if you work for state or county, your retirement account is not matched because you get access to a state pension. So in Virginia, it's called VRS, Virginia Retirement System. Or if you work for a county, it could be Fairfax County. And you can go online and you can Google it and you can figure out what are the stipulations of this pension. Now, what starts to happen? When I sit down with his mom, she's basically teaching me how it works. Oh yeah, this is how it works. If I work this many years, I get this if I, and I'm writing everything down. Now when I meet with her referral, I already know everything. The clients can actually teach you. I ask them, hey, can you tell me more about how this works? And they'll tell me, right? Or I can do my own research. And then they also have group life insurance. Our presentation has the Maryland group policy embedded inside of the, inside of the presentation. So we can talk to them about how you don't control it. You don't get paid on active status. It's not portable. It ends in retirement. As soon as you retire, there's no option to continue it, right? So these are the conversations that I have with state or county government. I know I'm not gonna bring up 401k and all that other stuff, right? But it'll be something similar. Federal government. There's a lot to learn here, but the basics are this. You have, when, when someone works federal, if someone works for DOD, if someone works for State Department, if someone works for wherever, right? They have their life insurance is called FEGLI, Federal Employee Group Life Insurance. They can get a maximum of five times their income. So if you're making 120, you can get an additional five times with the 600,000 as an example. The problem is that five times, it goes up every five years. And this is all public information. So if I go to the next slide here, this is small, but it shows how the five times when the person's young, it's $39 a paycheck. When they hit 55, it's $234 a paycheck. Right? Ever met a government employee that is still working at 60? Yeah, they all do, right? Because they're, 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 uh, that's when their highest years of compensation are, and then they're adding more money to their pension, the calculation towards their pension. The more years they work, the more money that they make. So look what happens. My cost went from 39 to $500 per month in the federal group life insurance. So I already know this going in. And you can Google Fegley calculator and they'll actually show you how to calculate this and what their cost is going to be. So whenever I'm going in with federal, Isidro, I'm thinking, all right, I know I'm gonna talk Fegley. Then the other thing I know I'm gonna talk about is their, their 401k is called the TSP, the Thrift Savings Plan. So when I meet with people who work for the government, I'm just throwing around these terms and they can tell, hey, this guy knows what he's talking about. He knows about Fegley. He knows about the Thrift Savings Plan. And I know that there are five funds. That's it. You get the C, S, I, F, and G. You have five options in the TSP. They're not great options. They're very limited. But once you turn 59 and a half, even if you're still working, you can move the money out of the plan to a private broker. So if you're listening to what Lisa Jones was saying, she was like, I have meetings with people 
And I have a, I have on my calendar when certain people are going to turn 59 and a half and they've already agreed to give me their entire thrift savings plan. Mm -hmm. Most thrift savings plans have 500,000 or more. That is how she's making a hundred grand in a month. A lot of times, mm -hmm. right? So if you decide to go in and network within a government employee base, these are things that you want to know, or if you meet with someone that already works there. Okay, let's look at the TSP, the G fund, the F fund, the C fund, the S fund, the I fund, international fund, small cap fund. This is S and P 500, fixed income, government securities, right? And you can see year to date, right? Our bond funds are down. Their bond fund is down. S and P 500 minus 18 percent. Small cap, minus 24. International, minus 22. So they're experiencing you know, the same losses as the rest of the market. The problem I tell people with the TSP, what I tell my clients is that either you have to be really aggressive or really conservative. There's nothing in between. If you come into the private market, right? Private products, we can find some in-betweens. It doesn't mean that there's no losses, but you can see there's nothing here that says like minus seven, minus 10. It's either a huge loss or a very small gain. And then last, I love meeting with business owners because I know that they have nothing. And even if they do, I can compete with it. Because if you're a business owner and you have insurance and you have investments, I can compete. If you're an employee and you have a 401k, I can't take the money out of your 401k before you're 60. You're stuck with that. So there's not a lot I can do with investment clients that have all their money in their 401k when they work a job. But when they run their own business, if they have two, three, four, five hundred thousand, a million dollars, it's in a private IRA or some type of account that's designed for business owners, and I'll be able to roll that over if I can show them more value. So business owners are great clients to be sitting down with because if they have insurance, it's private. We can beat most private policies. If they have investments, it's private. I feel I can beat whatever they're, whoever they're doing business with. So we're going to talk about it, right? What kind of life insurance do you have? Here, it's not going to be group. There's no group conversation. They either have term or they have cash value. We're going to figure it out. Or they have no insurance. What kind of retirement? Do you have a SEP IRA? Do you have a solo 401k? Do you have a simple IRA? Do you have a regular IRA? How many business owners, they have no retirement account? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about putting money away, reducing taxable income. Business owners get huge deductions for putting money in retirement, way more than employees. We got to take advantage of that. So if someone says, hey, we're meeting with my uncle and he runs a business, then I start to gather in my mind what kind of conversations we're going to be having. I'll probably be talking about why term insurance, if he has cash value, why cash value sucks, and we'll probably be doing some analysis of his investments and things like that. So who has questions about this? Hey, this is an amazing training. Your preparation, by the way, is unbelievable. Um, so this is random. As I was showing this to a client earlier this week, the uh, TSP fund returns and all that, you see how the... C and the S, obviously they're the most aggressive, but the C's got the highest returns out of, out of the two. But the S has like the the S has the lowest downturn for the year. Is there any like, do you know if there's like any particular reason for that? Like if you go back and you see negative 23 for the S, but the 10 year is lower. So is there like a reason for that? You understand what I'm asking? So because it had it, your, your question is because the S fund, which is 
small cap because it had a worse year why does it also have a lower 10-year return wouldn't that make sense i i guess on the upside if in my head if if, if a fund has a higher return on the upside then in times of like in the times we're in right now it would also have a lower downturn no, that's very a simplistic way to look at it. You have to look at the makeup of these. These are made of only large companies. The, this one is only made of small companies, mm. right? So there are times, windows, where small companies outperform large companies. And then there's times where large companies outperform small companies, even in terms of in times of downturn, right? Yeah. What's holding up the S&P 500 is like we always talk about big tech, right? So a lot of stocks have gone down, but not as much as small companies. Small companies have gotten destroyed, right? Now in the next year, you may see that the S fund does better than C fund because coming out of a downturn, smaller companies perform better than larger companies. So it's just really the makeup of the, what else? What other questions? Okay. When it comes to business owners, what would you say to encourage them for retirement? Because everyone has the mindset that they want to be the next, the next Jeff Bezos. If you're that rich, you don't need a retirement, right? Yeah. No, that's a lot of people don't believe in retirement. They feel their business is going to be their retirement or they're just yeah. uneducated on it or they feel that, you know, whatever capital they're putting in a retirement account, they could do better with that capital. I, I, I've heard a lot of different things. But at the end of the day, if you are making enough money to put money into a retirement account, some business owners aren't. A lot of business owners are losing money or they're breaking even, right? But if you are, like let's say you're making 20,000 a month on your business. What's a thousand dollars a month? Would you even, I always ask people this, would you even notice a thousand coming out of your account? Like Anisha's mom, right? I was like, she has 2000 coming out of her account every month. She forgot about it. Three years later, she was like a hundred grand. Yeah. Yes, right? <laughs> that there, so the selling point to some people is if you wouldn't even notice, but you can get a tax break. Isn't that something that we mm. should do just, to, just for the tax break? Yeah. I understand you're going to be Jeff, but even Jeff Bezos doesn't like the taxes, right? <coughs> so is there some amount of money that you could put away just for the tax advantage? Because putting money in a retirement account is 100% deductible off your taxes. If you put in 1000 a month, 2000 a month, that's 24000 coming off of your tax return. Right? They're not thinking about that. They're thinking of the end result of why, why do I need a retirement? I'm talking about today. You can save money on taxes if you open up a retirement. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, for the pension, you didn't talk about it, but um, are there any other options to like take a lump sum or anything for that? Like with the SPP pension, you could take a lump sum. It's always just income. The federal government, there's no option to roll out the lump sum. Um, if you work for an, an, a, a corporate company who has a pension, which is very rare, or some state governments, when you retire, you have the option of taking out the lump sum or you can get money for life. So it's kind of like an annuity. In that situation, I would take out the lump sum, put it into one of our annuities, you'll get a higher payout than leaving it with the government or with your company. What else? You said that uh, the state pensions sometimes apply from TG. Um, is that because people just know more about their pensions than like life insurance and like do you also be yeah in general people want are more knowledgeable about their retirement than their insurances um but if someone is like 30 no they're not gonna know anything about their pension but if someone is 58 and they just retired they probably learned a lot about it recently and then they can teach you about it if you don't know so shabazz just got a new job and he hit me this week like uh we got 401k options there should i keep putting money in my traditional with you or should i you know take advantage of this so my response back was what's the match and what are you making so he just sent me an article they're matching six 50 percent up to six percent and he's putting 400 a month in the fidelity fund Fidelity is the administrator for his 401k. What should he do, do you think? Um, Take advantage of it. Of I, I put it in the, he, 
the 400 he's putting with you in a traditional is no longer tax deductible. If he took all of it and put it in his 401k, he'd get a better tax advantage there. It's no longer just simply because he's being offered it or he has to actually take advantage of the 401 for it to for ours to no longer be deductible. Well, he should be taking advantage of it, even if it's a 50% match. Okay. So you had to go all 401. There's a Roth, and last thing is there's a Roth 401, so it should just, just obviously take advantage. Any other questions? What well, can you know why you can match like every like uh, business owners or self employed can, can take it on the different like 401k without involving other employees? Because I know there's some uh, there's some plans that you have to kind of have like for you to take advantage, you have to also include your employees. So just the business owner. So how do you know what's the match? That's a very complicated question and um, it changes all the time, but there are some basics. So when you get licensed, they give you this huge sheet, which is like a grid, and it'll tell you no employees, one employees, three employees, what the matches, what the responsibilities are, what the contribution limits are. So that's a whole thing in itself. Um, I just kind of use that quick reference guide. Okay. Yeah. And on, sorry, on, only for business owners, you didn't mention uh, at all like Roth. So that's not an option for them if they make less than whatever amount? No, it is. Roth is always an option. Okay. Um, I'm just personally running into it less and less, but absolutely it is an option. And if I create a 401k for my client, a solo 401k, I can add a Roth option in there as well for them. Okay. Yeah. How does, how does making something Roth, like how do you do that? When you set up the account, it's like I'm I'm setting it up for a corporation or for the person. The company that helps me set it up, they will put a Roth portion in there. They just set it up that way. Anything else? All right, guys. So let's. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Anything else we need to do? Cool. All right. So let's get on appointments. It's half the month. Um, what are we doing for Thanksgiving next week? We'll still be here on Saturday, yeah, right? Here. So Shaq said we'll still be on Saturday, obviously. The rest of the meetings are not this week. All right, two, one, three. One, two, three. We still have Monday, though, right? Uh, yes. That thing has every like, legal color, big yellow legal pad, basically that one.